All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the first Coaster Report of 2023. Uh, if you have not seen a Coaster Report before, this is a show, podcast, presentation thing uh, where I go to some theme parks and then I t talk to you about them. I don't know why I do it, but it's fun. So, um, so today we got three to go through because we went to we went on one big trip. But we went to three parks. So we're gonna start with um, start with start with Knobles, Um and then we're gonna move on from there. I think that's I think that's about it. Um, so just a little bit of a, a background on what this trip even was. So I've been playing this for a while, um, looking at the other parks that are in the area around me. There's a lot of parks in in the Midwest, so I was trying to think, okay, what what ones have I been to? I haven't been to yet. Um, and it turns out Pennsylvania has got a lot of parks. We've got quite a lot and they're right next door. Um, so I thought, you know, it'd be fun to go and do like a multi-day trip, go out there, hit a couple parks, should be a good time. So that's what we did. So on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, uh, we drove over to Hershey, Pennsylvania. Very far drive, not a lot of fun, but whatever. Um, that was our base of operations. And then on Thursday, we went to Knobles, which we're gonna talk about right here. Friday we went to Dorney Park, which we'll talk about after this, and then Friday and Saturday we went to Hershey Park itself. So a lot of parks, a lot of rides, a lot of coasties. It was a good time. So let's go ahead and get started with Knobles, because that's what we did on Thursday. It was the only one that was open, so why not start there? So if you're unfamiliar with Knobles, as I was, it's a, it's a pretty weird park, actually. Um, it's uh, definitely not much like your traditional Cedar Fair, Six Flags kind of park. Uh, it's more of like a big fairground, um, which is interesting. Um, they have like dozens and dozens of flat rides. It's like all the carnival flat rides you can think of. They open up the, the flat ride catalog and they're like, I want one of everything. And they just put them on a big field. And that's the park. And they also do have some roller coasters around the edges. Um, but they're some some pretty good rides, though, I will say. Um, it's kind of a reduction reductive way to describe the park, but, you know, um, it's kind of what it felt like. But it was fun. We had a good time. Uh, rode a lot of the rides there. And uh, let's go through them. So uh, as is traditional, at least lately with the Coast Report, I'm just going to list off everything that I rode uh, in order from how little I liked it to, well, I don't know, how much I liked it from least liked to most liked, because that's the way I do it. I don't know. Uh, all right. So, Old Smokey is my first first on the list. Uh, they have two train rides at Knobles. I thought they had a third when I was looking this up earlier, but I couldn't find information about third, so maybe I was mistaken. Um, but they have a couple tiny little trains, and Old Smokey is the definitely the worst one of the two that we rode. Uh, tiny, tiny little benches. It goes in a tiny little circuit around the edge of the park. You don't really see a whole lot. Doubles back on itself twice, so there's not really much to see there. Um, but other than that, you know, it's a train ride. You get to you get to ride in a train. Um, is is very weird. It's a very weird train. Because, like I said, the tiny benches, and they they said, like, put on the seatbelt when you get on the train, which is like a rope with a clip on it. It's not going to do anything, especially if you're a small child. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, not not my favorite. But if you like trains, you know, I like going on the trains anyway, just just for fun, you know, just to, just to do it. Sometimes you get to see some cool behind-the-scenes stuff. Sometimes you get to see some cool nature stuff. So... Trains are sometimes good for that, but this one, not my favorite. All right, next up, Stratosphere. One of the many, 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 many flat rides, carnival ride kind of things they have here. Um, I didn't ride too many of them because we were busy doing the other stuff that we'll get to. Um, I do like to try to get in the drop towers when I can because I do like me a drop tower. Uh, and it's a drop tower. It's really no different than any other drop tower I've ever ridden. Other than the fact that they don't hold you at the top, you, you, you raise up very slowly. You get a good view, which I will say. Um, but then they drop you immediately, so that you don't really get a chance to take it all in at the top. You're just, you just go, which isn't very exciting. 
I mean, it's kind of exciting, but I like the anticipation of sitting there at the top waiting, waiting to go down. I guess you still have the anticipation, but it's just delivered a little bit differently. Um, also, not a big fan of the seats on this one. There's like these leg guards next to your legs, and when you drop, your legs lift up, and then when you break, your legs slam down on top of the, the guards next to your legs, and it hurt. That was not very fun. Other than that, though, pretty pretty good. Pretty solid. Solid for a drop tower, I would say. You know, I think there's like a ceiling on how good a drop tower can be. Maybe. I don't I don't know if I've ridden one that I thought was like truly amazing, but I've heard there's some really good ones out there. So Atmosphere is not one of them, but it's it's fine as far as drop towers go. Alright, our first tracked ride. No, not a first tracked ride. The train was a first tracked ride. Uh, first non-train tracked ride. Black Diamond. This is technically a roller coaster according to uh, most roller coaster websites. Uh, I like the Bush Gardens. That's true. The, well, the Bush Gardens drop tower um, had its own problems. One, it's now gone. <laughs> Two, the the seat restraints are also really weird. Um, but it, also, it had a couple features that Stratosphere did not. Like it rotated as it went up, which is always fun. Um, the ops were, were fun on it, you know, so. Anyway. Not really relevant. Go back and watch the Bush Gardens Coast Report if you want to know more about that. Anyway, Black Diamond. Not to get too off track here. Technically a roller coaster, but it's more of a dark ride. Um, I think it only counts for some people as a coaster because it does technically have drops. Um, I think it's more of a dark ride, but it doesn't really matter. It's a ride. Um... It's a very strange one. So you have what look like traditional like wooden roller coaster trains, go up a lift hill, and then you kind of circle around uh, like a like a show building, like a traditional dark ride. Uh, you've got some animatronics, some decorations. It's all mine themed, um, and then you have a couple drops. The drops are all trimmed. They all got pretty heavy brakes on them, so you're not really going very fast at any point. So it, it's just a very weird, a very bizarre. Very unique ride, so um, definitely recommend getting a ride on it just because it's so different and so unique. But um, you know, it, it was it was okay. It wasn't great, but it was worth it was worth a go around. Yo, breakfast! Look who it is! Yeah, it's me. Hello, I'm here. Hey, care. Thank you for the reset. What's up? How's it going? How's everybody doing? All right, our second train. We did two trains at Knobles. Pioneer train, definitely by far the better of the two trains. Uh, one, it was larger. Uh, we could actually sit next to each other in the train instead of um, behind each other because it was actually slightly wider. The other train was like, this seats were like this wide. It was it was it was dumb. Uh, Pioneer train, more of a normal a normal miniature railroad, um, has a much better route um, that goes through. Um, more of the park, kind of around the back a little bit. So you see a lot of behind the scenes stuff, you see some woods, but you also get to go under one of the roller coasters, which is really cool. So that was fun. Um, slightly more enjoyable trip. A lot of stuff to look at. But it's a train, so you know what you're getting into. Wait, did it sit behind each other? Okay, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. I'll have to go back and check the tapes. Um, the seats were definitely bigger. I think we could, we probably could have fit. It would have been uncomfortable, but we, we probably could have done it. <laughs> okay, next in the list. Haunted Mansion. This is one of Knobel's, like, premier attractions. They love their Haunted Mansion. It's, this year is Haunted Mansion's 50th anniversary, and they're pretty excited for it, which, you know, good, good for them, I guess. Um, do we ever go to Knobel's when we were younger? No. At least not that I'm aware of. This is the first time I'd ever been there. I'm like 99.99% certain we've never been here before. I think I would have remembered. Man, I would hope. Um, but yeah, Haunted Mansion, anyway, it's a... It's another dark ride. It's nice to get some more dark rides in. I am I like dark rides. Jordan especially, I think, like some more than me even. But they're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, and you don't get a lot of them around here. You gotta... If you want to ride a dark ride, like, the only real place that has a lot of them is, like, Disney World. And they're very far away. So not a lot of good opportunities to get in dark rides, so I'll take them where I can. And it's definitely an interesting one. 
Um, there is, it's, it's long. It's longer than you would think for a park like this. And there's a lot of variety in the different rooms. Some of the effects are actually pretty cool. Um, even though there are some annoying sounds, it was very loud in there. And there's some like buzzers that go off for no reason. They don't really make any sense. They just give you a headache. Those I didn't like. Other than that though, pretty good ride. Enjoyed it. We did, we did it twice. So that tells you something. And this one also did not, um, they don't take, uh, uh, your all day pass. So I guess I should say, um, the way that the admissions work at Knobles is a little bit weird. Everything is free to get into free parking, free admission and everything. But if you want to ride rides costs money per ride, uh, like coasters are like $4. Some of the higher level throw eyes are like three fifty, something like that. You can have to buy ticket books and then you can change your tickets at the ride. Or you can get a wristband, which is what I did. Jordan used um yeah, there's also zero zero security. Also true. Um so you get what you pay for. <laughs> uh so we we bought a ticket book for Jordan, because she wasn't gonna ride as much stuff as I was. I got a, a wristband to ride all ride everything all day. Haunted Mansion for some reason not included in the wristband, so you had to pay tickets for it no matter what. Kind of annoying. Uh, but I guess that's how highly they think of it. But we wrote it twice anyway, so... Um, partly because we had a lot of extra tickets, and partly because uh, it was fun, and we wanted to ride again. So... Um, yeah. Probably one of those must-ride must rides if you're at Knobles, but you probably already knew that if you were, if you were planning on going. Alright. Intermission here. Talking about food a little bit. So, Knobles has a reputation for having some of the best park food in the country, from what I understand. They've won awards for their park food. So I had high hopes. And I was very disappointed with, with our, our food experience. Um, it's probably because we came in May, which is pre-season, technically. But half the stuff was closed. Half the food stalls were closed, and it was like the more interesting half. Everything that was open was like very traditional park fare. You had burgers, you had corn dogs, hot dogs. All the stuff that we thought was interesting and different that we wanted to try the most, none of it was open. Really disappointing. Uh, Jordan wanted to get that, uh, uh, they, have, they have a Dole Whip stand. You can get a flight of Dole Whip flavors. We were looking forward to that for weeks and then we get there and it's closed. No Dole Whip. What's up with that? Um, so we didn't eat a ton of stuff when we were there, um, I guess. Uh, corn dog was pretty decent. You know, they, they did hand fry it, which was, which was nice. Um, and we got a frozen raspberry lemonade thing at their frozen lemonade stand, which was also quite nice. Um, but you know, on a, on a hot day when you're outside all day, that's, that's always going to hit the spot. <laughs> yeah, a, f a flight. You know, if, if you've ever been to a, like a bar... You know, if if you're familiar, and you get like a, a beer flight, you get a bunch of little beer tasters. You know, five or six different kinds of beer. They do that for Dolip. They had like, they had a menu. It was like, here's the four flavors of Dolip that we're gonna have today. You get a flight. You get a little little taster of each one. It sounded awesome, but nope. Oh well. Um, maybe maybe next time we go, we'll have better food experience. But uh, didn't happen for us today. I guess go in June, July, August when they have more stuff open. Okay, moving on to top half of the rides here. Flying Turns, another one of the, or I think this is the first, second roller coaster if you count Black Diamond on the list. Um, this one is the lowest, one of the lower graded ones, but I still think it was a very cool ride. Uh, it's a wooden bobsled coaster. I don't know if there are any other wooden bobsled coasters in the world there might be like one or two but not in the united states from what i understand i didn't look this up but i should have so I, you know i don't know what i'm talking about ever verify <laughs> verify your sources um also this one is a tendency apparently not to run very often but i got lucky and i was able to ride it it was up all day um this one always had the longest line though because it has very small capacity tiny trains of three car trains and usually people ride by themselves because they don't want to ride with a stranger, which I kind of get. You don't want a stranger in your lap. Um, but anyway, pretty cool coaster. Um, if you watch a POV of it, it looks, you know, kind of swingy as bobsleds do as they go with the track. It's even swingier in person. At least I thought it was. I guess a lot of the ride experience is going to depend on 
the weight distribution in your train and maybe ours was a little bit heavier so it was able to get you know more momentum up and swing through the trough a bit more um but yeah it was it was fun uh it's it's a weird layout though uh the last like half of the coaster is like a chain lift like the third chain there's four chain lifts the third one you go up and then there's like a little dip down and then you go through the fourth chain lift and then the ride's over and it's like that was a minute of chain lifts i don't, I don't get it anyway it was fun though i only got to ride it once because uh the lines were slow moving we didn't have a ton of time but uh i enjoyed it it was good stuff definitely get it a, get in that line if you're ever at Knobles and it's open because uh opportunities are apparently are kind of rare okay next up on the list impulse Knobles only steel coaster i guess if you don't count black diamond um a zero tower coaster i don't think i've ever i think it's my first zero coaster i've ever ridden maybe um but uh, it's a tiny little, basically like a twister coaster kind of thing. You go up your chain lift, and you get a cobra roll, there's a loop, and there's a, t a twist, and then it's over. It's pretty short, but uh, it's kind of fun. Um, I hate the vertical chain lifts, I've learned. I've learned this this week that vertical lifts are the worst. They're not as comfortable as you think. And I didn't think they were going to be comfortable, and it was worse than I thought. <laughs> You're looking right at the sun. Um but popping over the top of the lift into the vertical drop down at the bottom is pretty good you get some good ejector off of the the top of the lift it's a good g-force at the bottom yeah short little ride a little rattly um but it was fun I did this one twice and uh, i enjoyed it it's, it's not like a fantastic coaster if you like inversions this is for you i guess you know inversions are fun but they're not like my main thing that i care about when it comes to coasters um, I do like the, the, the twist at the end. It takes very slowly, which I always enjoy that. I do like some hang time on, on the slow twists, so that was fun. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Who's idea was to do vertical chain lifts? I, I don't know who came up with it originally, but I don't like them. Like, I understand it. Like, it's probably really, really great for saving space. You can make really small compact coaster designs with it, which is, you know important but man it's not a comfortable ride experience i don't like it <clears throat> okay here's my controversial hot take here's where phoenix lit phoenix winds up on my list phoenix is apparently like one of the highest rated maybe the highest rated wooden coaster on some of the sites i've looked at like in the world so i was looking forward to this one and i did like it quite a lot um, it's a more traditional layout, you know, double out and back figure eight kind of thing. Um, but it has um, a very cool feature of basically no restraints. There's no seatbelt and there is only a buzz bar. So the bar that comes down flat doesn't touch your body. It's like at chest level just to make sure that you don't fly out of the car. But you have a lot of give for bouncing up and down your seat and this ride has some of the best airtime I've ever experienced. I love airtime, and this thing totally delivers. Um, it kind of comes through on some of the POVs, but it's it's definitely you got to experience it in person. I'm a tall guy; I have long legs, but I was still like almost standing up in the back of the car going through some of those speed hills. It was pretty amazing. So these are mad old, yeah. Um. Not Phoenix. Phoenix is, uh, the, the coasters at Knobles aren't super old. Wait till we get to some of the other parks and we'll see some old rides. Um, but, uh, definitely the, the kinds of restraints they were using back on wooden coasters in the eighties and before with, with just the, the buzz bars, no seatbelt, um, the rides that were able to keep their restraints that way. It's a, uh, it's good time. Yes, Hershey does have some old rides, and we'll talk about those when we get there. Um, but yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix is really great. Was able to ride this one three times. I rode it in the back car every time because that's where you get the best airtime. I've I've learned over the last few years, I'm a back, back row guy. I'm a back row rider. When I would go to parks with my family when I was a kid, we would always want to ride in the front because I think that's what my dad likes. So we'd always ride in the front. And then as I've gotten older, I'm like, 
Coaster is always better for me in the back because I like the airtime. I like the speed. You get more speed in the back because as you crest the hill, the rest of the train's already halfway down it. So for me personally, that's the way to go. So second to last row on Phoenix. So you're not over the wheel, but you're in the back car. That's the way to do it. Yeah, great coaster. Very good stuff. Lives up to its, its um, reputation, I would say. Which means my number one ride, I guess this this is this is my hot. I don't know how hot of a take this is, but I put I put Twister above Phoenix, but only just. They're two very different coasters, so so you know, don't don't, don't get too upset if you love Phoenix. Um, <clears throat> so un, unlike Phoenix with its uh very traditional figure eight layout, airtime hills, and that's kind of it. Twister. It's more of a twister coaster, I guess. It's in the name. Um, it does a lot more interesting stuff. It's more about the cool layout and the weird elements. It's got like a, a chain lift that's split in two. Like you go up halfway and then you do a turnaround and you, then you keep going up the rest of the lift. Super weird, but it was cool. They found a way to make the, the chain lift interesting, which I thought was wild. You got some really great helixes, really forceful elements. Uh, there's a tunnel. There's, I was not expecting, because you can't see half the ride from uh, from the path. So I didn't even know there was a tunnel until we were going through it. I was like, well, cool. There's a tunnel. <laughs> so, you know, uh, interesting layout. It was really cool. Um, I like this one a lot. A lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I did put it above Phoenix, but only barely. Like, they're, they're very different rides. They're good. I, I read some. I read somewhere someone said they were good foils for each other. And I think that's, I think that's very valid. They do different things. But they both do them very, very well. And you know, if you like one over the other, that's that's totally cool. Yo, Bacon. Currently in the bathroom, work. Stopping by and say hi. Well, hello. I forgot to say hi to the the vod vod watchers at the beginning. Hi, vod watchers. If you're out there, um, you make your chain loops interesting by making them pull at 400 kilometers an hour. Well, yeah, that that works too. They're not going to run 400 kilometer an hour chain lifts at uh, at Knobles, unfor unfortunately. Uh, Disney needed to walk through Haunted Mansion with the lights on. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, send me a link or or save it, and we'll watch that tonight. Maybe that sounds like a good time. Okay. Finally, we have to have the did not ride slide. I always include this. I because in my old coaster reports, there will be times where I didn't get to ride every single coaster. Uh, at Knobles, I did not ride Cosmo's Curve, the, the kitty coaster. I wasn't there to pad my credit count. I was just there to have a good time, and I didn't want to, um, didn't want to take a ride away from, from some little kid. So, so no kitty coaster for me, and we didn't ride any of the other flat rides. Like I said, they've got dozens of these, like, carnival flat rides. Some of them looked kind of frightening. Some of them looked kind of janky. Some of them probably would have been pretty fun. Um... But uh, didn't really have uh, the time and or inclination to do most of them. Even though they probably were safe. <clears throat> yeah, the, the double helix on, on Twister was probably one of the best parts. It's also recently been retracked. They're doing good work on maintaining it, making sure it's still nice and smooth. Um, so yeah, if you, I guess you can see in, in the, I don't know, you probably can't see it very well in this photo. Oh I mean, yeah, you kind of can. The, um, you got some lighter colored wood on the helix because it's uh, recently been redone and it was quite smooth. It was very good. Best roller coaster mega round. What well, on that note though, um, I didn't talk about it here, but they do have a merry round museum in the park. It's not a very large museum, uh, but they have a cool collection of a whole bunch of merry round animals from all parks, all kinds of parks. Um, some of them were super old. There were some from like the 1700s, 1800s. I don't know how old exactly. They're definitely some from the 1800s. Real old, um, real historic stuff. A lot of different varieties. I don't really care much about merry go history, but you know, as a theme park enthusiast, I thought it was still pretty interesting. Um, a good way to kill, you know, 10 minutes when you're there. Just get out of the sun for a bit. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. All right, and that's all the rides that we experienced at Knobles, which, uh, yeah, it was all the coasters, both the dark rides, both the trains, 
drop tower. No, they're flat rides. We didn't ride the whip. They have a whip. Um, one of the few like traditional whips left in the world. Ones at Knobles. Uh, we didn't ride that one. We should have, but we didn't. Maybe next time. Um, all right, but yeah, final thoughts. Quite a quite a nice and fun park. Surprisingly well run of selection rides, so they must look a bit janky. So I kind of already went over this, but yeah, like I said, they have a ton of stuff. They've got coasters for, for people like me. They've got some a lot of good kitty rides, and the the scale and breadth of the flat rides they have is pretty good. Some really little stuff for the kids, some bigger stuff for the teens. Good selection of rides. Wish they would have had a couple more coasters, but you know what can you do? There's only so much space you can work with. But you know, another another steel coaster might not be a, a bad addition to the park. I gotta say. Um, be free to get lost as layout makes no sense. This is my biggest pet peeve about Knobles. There's no midways. Um, it's like just a giant field, and they put they scattered the flat rides to the wind, put a bunch of buildings between all of them, and then dotted the coasters around the outside. So, good luck finding your way around, especially if you're like me and have absolutely no sense of direction. We had to pick up an actual physical paper map to figure out where the hell we were. We got lost at least three times. Um, we were looking for lunch, we were trying to find the roast beef stall, and we could not find it. It was it was very sad. I don't know how well this comes through on the, the tiny camera, but there's there's no midway. It's just a smattering of stuff. Pardon me. Um, eventually we figured out where some like landmarks were like, okay, there's the building that looks like a loaf of bread. So we know we're near the front of the park. Um, you know, there's, there's Phoenix. We know we're near the back of the park, but like the buildings block your line of sight. So you usually can't see the coasters. So it's hard to navigate, but we figured it out. Yeah, we couldn't find roast beef stall line. We looked so we walked all the way around where it was supposed to be. It was listed on the map because we wanted to get some roast beef sandwiches. We couldn't find it anywhere. It was so dumb. Yeah, Jordan has a pretty good sense of direction most of the time. And she's getting lost. So that tells you something. Maybe if you go there a lot and you're used to it, it's not so bad, but I don't know. Uh great operations. Uh despite uh <clears throat> despite being preseason, despite uh, the crowd level being, you know, moderately high, uh, operations did a great job getting people through the through the lines. Um, I think they had one train ops on both wooden coasters, but you didn't really notice because things flowed really well, got people through. I think they're only running two trains on impulse, and those are tiny trains. They seat eight people. Um, but uh, yeah, the staff was great, very friendly. Very helpful. Um, good stuff. Um, all day ride ban might actually not be worth it. So I didn't do the math on this. The all day ride ban, you get a little wristband, which is what I did. I think it was like $50. So you can ride everything all day long. But the coasters are like four. So if you ride the coasters, I think only rode, let's see, five, six, seven, like nine coaster rides, we'll say. A couple of flats. It might not, like, if you total all that up, it might not have made $50. It might have. I guess it depends how long you stay, how fast you can get through things. But, I don't know. You have to do the math on it. For for Jordan, it, it would not have been worth it because she didn't write as much stuff as me, so we wound up getting the ticket booth, ticket book for her. And which we ran out of and had to get more later on the day. So that, that was worth it. But um, If you really care about planning ahead and... Saving those extra dollars, I guess, do the math beforehand. Yeah, how many how many times do you want to ride the Haunted Mansion? I rode it twice, and we had to pay out of the ticket book for it. So, uh, watch out for school trips. This is an important piece of advice that applies to any park, not just Knobles, uh, in May. Because I forgot about this. We experienced this last year uh, and a couple of Kings Island trips, and then I forgot about it. And now I'm putting a bullet point here for it, so I know. I can remind myself. Don't go to parks... <laughs> during weekdays in May because all the middle school band kids and like physics classes and whatever they all pick the same day to go to the park and they run rampant and it's not fun to deal with 
I thought we were going to have a totally dead day at Knobles and it was going to be great. Uh, it was not the case. There were kids everywhere. They weren't like super poorly behaved or anything. Um, it was just annoying to have to wait in line after them and walk around them. <laughs> so uh, just keep that in mind. If you happen to want to go to a park in May, uh, it might be a school day. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, oh no. That's it. That's my presentation on Knobles. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, coming up, we're going to talk about... We're, coming up, we're going to be talking about Dorney. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>